Welcome friends to another Dune video. Today we're going to cover a few assassination tools from the original Dune novel, the Hunter Seeker, the Poisoned Tooth and the Gom Jabbar, with a few additional details from the Dune Encyclopedia. Let's get straight into it. The Hunter Seeker is made up of two parts, the console that controls it and the device itself. As the Dune Encyclopedia describes it, a hair thin metal sliver measuring five centimeters or less it moved via a suspensor field which lets the operator move it at speed and it is easy to maneuver though it can only move in short bursts with a good operator it could be moved slowly enough to pierce a personal force shield and is small enough that you might not notice it as well the nose of the hunter seeker carries a crystal eye and the operator uses those to see their prey the eye also has a deadly tip. That is how the hunter seeker enters a victim's body. Once this happened, it would sense electric impulses and enter the nearest nerve pathway. It would then move towards the major organs, leaving in its wake torn tissue. Once it had done enough damage to kill the target, the nervous system level would drop. And so with nothing to detect, it would freeze in place. At that point, Within an hour, it would disintegrate and would leave only the crystal eye. Though it was tiny and would be difficult to find in an entire body, the operator was hard to conceal and had an operating range of 75 metres, limiting where they could be. We see, to get close to Paul, the Harkonnens had to bury theirs in a wall. According to the Dune Encyclopedia, at first House Carino only knew about the device, and in those cases the operator did not need to hide as they could operate it discreetly as no one would know what they were looking at or for. It became public knowledge when a plot happened to kill the Carino heir but the prince's spies uncovered the plot. Then the prince read out a description of the plot before the imperial court and that included a description of the hunter seeker and after that the weapon became widely used for a time. In Dune by Frank Herbert, Paul, perhaps from his lessons with Thufa Howard, knows a weakness for the Hunter Seeker. Its compressed suspensor field distorted the vision of its transmitter eye. With nothing but the dim light of the room to see his target, the operator would be relying on motion, anything that moved. The book notes the room is dimly lit. It is worth mentioning that the operator's task to find his target would be easier with better light and that without seeing it as Paul does with his training it would be easier to assassinate someone the hunter secret device is so small the Dune Encyclopedia does note that there were ways developed to detect the hunter seekers once they became well known perhaps with the right distraction the cause of death of the victim might be believed to be something else other than the hunter seeker if the right false evidence is provided to pick up back with Paul and his encounter with it, it is noted that the suspensor field will make it slippery on the bottom. Paul, with sharp reflexes, grabs it and, with a violent turn and thrust, he slammed the thing's nose against the metal door plate. He felt the crunch of it as the nose eye smashed and the seeker went dead in his hand. Over time, this technology does advance, again in an attack on Paul, after he has taken the Lion Throne and taken the from the name of Mordeeb. These hunter seekers were self-guiding and hidden in plant pots, and when you grip them, there is a ring of fine needles with poison on them there. Another weapon well known is the poisoned tooth, famously given to Leto, Paul's father, but we will come back to that particular point. What was in the tooth was a poison called criminon, a gas that can be carried in a tiny capsule, which will be lethal to a large room of people, even an auditorium size room. Leto had such a tooth. There, the expanding cloud killed the Baron's mentat, and nearly the Baron himself. It was placed into the mouth of Leto by the Atreides traitor, Dr. Yui. To unleash this, Leto had to bite on the capsule, and then open his mouth to breathe out the poison. The Gomjabai is a needle that is tipped with a metacyanide, and when it enters a victim, it gives almost immediate death. It is, of course, used to test people, as it is with Paul early in the first Dune novel, 
but it also has other uses. The gom jabar can be used against an enemy. The best known example is covered in the Dune Encyclopedia slash the first Dune novel. We'll go, go into that now. Alia Atreides, Paul's sister, got to her feet and dropped a dark needle from her hand. The Baron fell back. His eyes bulged as he stared at a red slash on his left palm. You, you, he rolled sideways in his suspensers. A sagging mass of flesh supported inches off the floor, with head lolling and mouth hanging open. Her final words to him on this occasion are reputed to have been, I'm sorry, grandfather, you've met the Atreides Gomjabar, a pretty piece of irony because a poisoned needle was the weapon used. Now friends, I turn this over to you. What do you think to the effectiveness of these weapons? Are there any I have missed from later in the series of books? Have you terminated a room with a poisoned tooth? Comment down below.